Welcome to the Rock of Cashel, one of Ireland's most iconic landmarks, a place where legends intertwine with history and where the whispers of saints, kings and ancient peoples still echo through the winds. Perched on a limestone hill in County Tipperary, the Rock of Cashel has been a symbol of power and spirituality for over a thousand years. But its story reaches back even further, to a time when it was more than just a strategic fortress. This was the seat of the Kings of Munster, a royal site that predates the arrival of Christianity in Ireland. According to legend, the origins of the Rock of Cashel are as dramatic as the landscape itself. It's said that the rock was formed when the devil, fleeing from St. Patrick, bit off a chunk of a nearby mountain and spat it out. That chunk landed here, becoming the famous rock that we see today. So if you've ever wondered how this massive outcrop came to be in the middle of an otherwise flat landscape, well now you know, at least according to legend. But let's move from myth to history. The Rock of Cashel became the seat of the powerful kings of Munster in the 4th century AD, long before Ireland was unified under a single monarch. For centuries, this hill was the political and military heart of the southern kingdom. The most famous of these kings was Angus Mac Nad Free, who ruled in the 5th century. His reign marked a turning point, both for the kingdom and for Ireland itself, because it was during his rule that Christianity came to Munster. Around 450 AD, St. Patrick, the man credited with converting Ireland to Christianity, made his way to Cashel. By this time, Patrick had already begun his mission across Ireland, spreading the Christian faith, building churches and baptizing the Irish people. When he arrived in Cashel, it marked a significant moment. The pagan kings of Munster were about to embrace a new faith. St. Patrick's visit to the Rock of Cashel was not just a political affair, it was deeply spiritual. He came to baptize King Angus, who had already been influenced by the Christian message. But as with all moments of profound change, this ceremony would not be without its challenges. As Patrick raised his staff and began the baptismal rites, something unexpected happened. In the midst of the ceremony, he inadvertently drove his staff into the king's foot, piercing through Angus's skin. Blood poured from the wound, yet the king didn't flinch, didn't cry out in pain. Angus believed that this pain was simply part of the baptism, a sacrifice he had to endure for his faith. His silent acceptance of the injury became a powerful symbol of his devotion to Christianity and his willingness to embrace the new religion wholeheartedly. When St. Patrick realized his mistake, he was horrified, but Angus assured him there was no offense. In that moment, the bond between the pagan kings of Munster and the new Christian faith was sealed, not just in water, but in blood. The baptism of Angus at Cashel marked a major milestone in the spread of Christianity across Ireland. It signaled the conversion of Munster, one of the most powerful kingdoms in Ireland, and from that point on, the Rock of Cashel became not just a royal stronghold, but a spiritual center for the Christian faith.
In the centuries that followed, the Rock of Cashel was transformed. By the 12th century, the kings of Munster had ceded Cashel to the church, and what we see today took shape, an impressive collection of medieval buildings that dominate the skyline. One of the most prominent structures here is the cathedral, built in the 13th century. Though it now stands roofless, its grandeur is undeniable. The cathedral was the heart of religious life on the Rock of Cashel, a place where bishops and pilgrims alike gathered in worship. Its massive stone walls and towering arches still inspire awe, centuries after they were built. The cathedral may have lost its roof, but it has never lost its dignity. The scale of the structure reminds us of the ambition and devotion of those who erected it, an enduring symbol of faith on this ancient site. Adjacent to the cathedral is the Hall of the Vicar's Choral, a lesser known but equally fascinating part of the rock. Built in the 15th century, this hall was home to a group of clergy known as the Vicar's Choral, appointed to sing during the cathedral services. Their lives revolved around the spiritual duties within these walls, and the hall served as both a residence and a place of daily worship. Step inside today, and you'll find it beautifully restored. The simple yet elegant design with its wooden beams and stone walls transports you back in time, making it easy to imagine the hymns that once echoed through these chambers. Standing on this rock, you can almost feel the weight of history beneath your feet. The battles, the coronations, the prayers whispered in the wind. The Rock of Cashel has seen it all. It has withstood the test of time, from its origins as a seat of kings, to its role as a religious sanctuary, and even its fall to the forces of Cromwell in 1647, when the rock was attacked and many of its defenders massacred. That was one of the darkest chapters in the history of the rock. The attack left much of the site in ruins, but its legacy was never forgotten. Today, the Rock of Cashel is a place of wonder, attracting visitors from around the world. It stands not only as a monument to Ireland's past, but also as a reminder of the resilience of its people. Though the kings are long gone, the spirit of this place endures. And perhaps the most enduring symbol of all is the round tower, built around 1100. This silent sentinel has stood guard over the rock for more than nine centuries. It rises nearly 30 meters into the sky, a perfect blend of architectural beauty and strategic defense. Round towers like this were often built as bell towers, but also served as safe havens during times of attack. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more historical explorations from McBrowser. Until next time, may the stories of the past continue to inspire your present.